Hey class, we're continuing in our uh, ecology unit, this time looking at activity six, and I just wanted to let you know um, that there's going to be several things linked, so a video and some notes, so if you need those, be sure to check out the links below. All right, here we go. So activity six is called producers and consumers, and we're starting to think about how energy and nutrients uh, can move through an ecosystem, how that might affect its sustainability. So we started by looking at this food web. Uh, it, food webs are ways that we can see how energy and nutrients flow through the organisms within an ecosystem. And what we started asking is, if we start with these phytoplankton down at the bottom, and then think about these zooplankton here as well, how might the, what role might they play in the sustainability of the ecosystem? So a lot of you noted that they're, uh, they're down at the bottom, so they're sort of setting the base and that all of these other organisms are dependent on those. Uh, zooplankton are sort of right above phytoplankton, um, so that means that they're also dependent on phytoplankton. So we started to introduce terms uh, producers and consumers. So producers are those organisms that can create food from inorganic matter. So they can take sunlight, carbon dioxide, water, they can turn that into chemical energy. Consumers are organisms that can't create their own food. They depend on others for their food source. So if we look back at our food web, what we see is that phytoplankton down here at the bottom, they must be producers. They have to be able to take and create their own food source. Zooplankton that are up above them, they can consume phytoplankton as well as other zooplankton. And then as you move up, all of these would be consumers of the things that are sort of one level below them. So it's important to note, again, that phytoplankton are the producers and zooplankton are consumers and part of the consumers of the ecosystem. So read through the introduction if you haven't. Um, it gives you some a good insight into where we're going. And ultimately what we're trying to answer is how do plankton populations affect the sustainability of the fishery? There was a really uh, cool TED-Ed video, so again, I'll link that down below if you need it. Um, check it out, just kind of introducing plankton and some pretty cool visuals of, of what the world of plankton looks like. We spent some time looking at these eight different types of plankton. We're trying to think about what their characteristics were, so um, I'll link the uh, my, my Craspy images down below if you want to look at those. But what I had you do is try to think about what are the characteristics about these plankton, and can we start to class what might be phytoplankton or zooplankton based on those characteristics. Um, so if we're thinking about phytoplankton, we need to see things, structures and characteristics that would allow them to uh, create their energy to use photosynthesis, so it's going to be something like chloroplasts, uh, seeing green chlorophyll in them as well. Um, for the zooplankton, they're going to be consumers, right? So they need things that allow them to uh, consume the energy that they need. So they're going to be able to need to be able to move. Um, so something like a copepod that's going to have uh, these long cilia to allow it to grab its food, to allow it to uh, move through water to uh, find the food source that it needs. So we made a chart. We were able to lay out which ones uh, are phytoplankton and which ones are zooplankton based on their characteristics. And then again, we are still always remembering that phytoplankton are going to be the producers and zooplankton are going to be the consumers. So you're going to see those structures they have are going to function in a way to allow it to, uh, to play that role in the ecosystem. Finally, one of the things we wanted to think about was if, if a fishery, an industry that catches or raises fish or shellfish to be processed or sold, um, it's dependent, it's sustainability depends on things like plankton. Um, we need to be able to understand the scale of that. So there was a calculation that gave you thinking about um, Atlantic red herring and just how many fish there are. So they estimated there's something like 16 billion fish in this one fishery. Um, if you consider how much plankton they need, then every day they need 160 billion grams of plankton. Uh, be 160 million kilograms of plankton a day. So any change, any slight change in that, would have a huge impact on uh, the fishery, the local economy, the environment, the sustainability of that ecosystem. So that's our challenge question. Hopefully you can start to see how these plankton populations play an important role in the sustainability of the fisheries. Uh, key vocabulary, so these are the words we were looking at, uh, particularly things like fishery plankton, 
consumers, producers. So if you aren't sure on any of these, make sure you uh, go back, take a look at your notes, look at the readings, let me know. All right, I hope that was helpful, and I'll see you back in class.